there's none beside you. Yeah. Lord, I surrender to your will. My God, I surrender to your Thank you for tuning in. This is a message from God's House International Centre, Bristol. We pray that it leaves a lasting impact and that what you hear blesses you, encourages you, fills you with hope and points you to the ultimate source of peace, which is Jesus. Enjoy the message. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? And hello, children. How have you been? We thank God that all of us have been doing well by grace and he has given us the grace to adapt to our new circumstances and we are on the final lap of March. Next week, by God's grace, we are all crossing over into the month of April. Let's close our eyes and pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Almighty God. We are grateful for the breath of life. We are grateful that you have sustained us and kept us from harm. We are grateful for each day that you have woken us up and seen us through. Lord, we are aware there are many people in worse of conditions than us. There are people queuing in hospitals. There are people struggling even to breathe. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We are under the shadow of your wings. You have not allowed this pestilence to plague our homes. You have kept it at bay by your mighty hand. For this we want to thank you. Thank you for all the breakthroughs of the month of March. Thank you for your provision, protection, health. Thank you for everything you've done for us and our families. Thank you for our nation. Thank you that you are the God who is watching over us. Lord, as we humble ourselves and seek your face and turn, from our wicked ways, we know you are hearing from heaven above and you are healing our land. We thank you for the revival that is coming as well. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we place all our lives in your hands and our time together in your hands. May your spirit teach us as we hear the word of God together this morning. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know it can sound tiring or a bit frustrating to be just sitting at home and doing things around the house. But you know what? When we were young, we used to have a little poem where we used to play a game and we used to say, East, West, which place is best? We East, West, home is best. And we also say a statement in English that says, charity begins at home. So home is like our headquarters. So it's like we have all been recalled back to headquarters to realign ourselves, getting ready for the next phase of our lives. So as I was praying and meditating on what I am going to share with us this morning, uh, there are words that just came up. Now, I know in this season, we have common words that are being used in many platforms, uh, words like virus, vaccine, an invisible enemy that is moving across the face of the earth. And I felt led to share along those lines 
and I have two F words we'll be working with in the morning today. And I know when people hear F words, they automatically think, hmm, something vulgar. No, 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 it's not vulgar. Relax. So we are talking about fear and faith. Both are powerful forces. Both influence lives. And both of them are invisible. But we see their effects visibly. There is healthy fear where like uh, a child sees maybe fire and the parent says that will burn you and they fear. That one is a natural instinct for safety. But that's not the fear we are going to focus on right, right now. There is fear that is unhealthy. This is the fear that torments, that takes away sleep, that paralyzes and cripples potential. And I know right now as we are in this phase, there are many people who have been struggling with different types of fear. The Greek word for fear is phobos. That's where we get phobias, different types of phobias. But right now we have a coronaphobia that has been crippling nations and people. And God's word to us is fear not. So when we define fear, the dictionaries will say fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger. It's a bad feeling that is caused by a belief that something bad is going to happen. It's an emotion caused by perceived danger. And when one is fearing, one sometimes ends up exaggerates, exaggerating the fear and underestimating the ability to cope with it. But faith is the opposite of fear. So we could say fear is like a virus that infects and destroys that harms. And we can now say faith is like a vaccine now that comes to treat this virus and to quench it. Faith for me is expecting something good to happen by the grace of God due to his goodness. And fear to me is expecting something bad to happen instigated by Satan, the father of lies. In Bible school, we learned uh, that fear was false evidence appearing real. So Satan, the liar, will bring certain things in your face and in your thoughts, in your mind, and they look real, and you start to be scared. So fear, when you are fearing, it's like believing the lies of Satan and expecting those lies to happen. Whereas faith is believing the truth, of the word of God and expecting what you are believing to happen. So we should have absolute trust in God, especially in the face of this corona phobia. Some quotes on fear. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. What a sad thing. Instead of living your dream, you are actually living what you fear. Another definition says the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And that is Franklin D. Roosevelt. Another uh, definition which I found like very simple and easy to understand is fear. Fear keeps us focused on the past or worried about the future. If we can acknowledge our fear, we can realize that right now as in today, we are still alive. And our bodies are working marvelously. Our eyes can still hear the voice of our loved one. And this is by Tit Nat Han. So fear can take away from our moment. It makes us live in environments we are not. You are not in your past. You are not in your future. Yet you can be worried about what will be the outcome. Like now, some people are already worried about what will happen in May. What will happen in June. Will we lose our jobs? What about our education? What about our homes? What is going to happen to our children, our parents? People secretly are fearing that Corona is going to kill them and kill their loved ones and disempower them and cause them to not do well in life. But what about today when we are not in the hospitals? We are not in a ventilator, we are not in a queue. You fail to enjoy today because certain with his own ways, little tactics and lies, can cause you to start believing negatively. Whereas 
faith. Faith is taking the first step even when you do not see the whole staircase. That is Martin Luther King Jr. So with faith, you don't need to see the whole staircase. So you don't have to have the whole picture of 2020, how it's going to look like. Thinking, okay, because now this is what has happened in March. That means April like that. That means uh, you go a day at a time. Jesus even say sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So faith starts with that step. And then another good definition by St. Augustine of faith says, Faith is to believe what you do not see. Is the reward of this faith you then see what you believe. You don't start by seeing it, but you end up seeing it, which is lining up with what the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6. Faith is the substance of things of, and the evidence of things not seen. Both faith and fear cannot be in one heart. So when you are in fear, faith disappears. But when you have faith, fear disappears. And both are a daily choice. You don't bank on faith and say, oh, I had faith yesterday. That faith must carry me every day. No, it's a daily decision that you choose to trust in God with your life, with your family, and with your loved one. Fear is like a virus that infects and it ends up affecting the people around you. Faith is also like that vaccine. It also affects people around you when you walk in good health, when you walk in wholeness. Faith builds and sets free, but fear puts into bondage and it consumes. Fear can paralyze and it can hinder you from getting help even when you need the help. Especially if you need help that you need to go into hospital and get the help. If you are scared of hospitals, if you are scared even of contacting your GP, you might lose up on the help that you're going to get. I remember when I had to make a decision with, uh, for the major surgery that I had, it took me a while to come up with that decision because first of all, I, do, I don't want injections and I don't want the smell of a hospital and I don't want to be away from my family. And also, I read around the type of surgery I was having and I saw the effects that you could easily um, get uh, to lose your life. There was no guarantee that you come out well. I love Jesus. I know if anything happens, I would go to heaven. But I was not prepared at that time to leave my husband and my children because I think they still need me. So I dilly dallied making the decision. And also I was praying and believing God, but I was ignoring kind of the fact that God has provided the medicine and the medical team to help me to achieve this goal. And I want to thank God with the support of my family and further consultations, I ended up having that surgery. I prayed first when I was told about all the risks that I could encounter. When the consultant was telling me all the risks, fear started to come in because all the risks were negative. It included even a mistake or perforation that could take place or me failing to come out of the operation. And he was saying, do you really want to go ahead with this? Do you, the more he said this, the more fear was coming again. Then I realized, but this is false evidence appearing. It wants to appear like I will be perforated. They will make a mistake on me. So I asked the consultant, in your lifetime as a practitioner, how many uh, bowels or organs have you perforated during your time of surgery? And he said, none. Then I said, so you're not going to perforate me. At that moment, faith arose. And I remember as well a, a, a mistake I almost made when, my, when I was a girl. My, my husband was pursuing me at that moment. And I took long before I replied him. I think it took me about a year before I could even say yes. Because I, I had hidden fears. I had seen so many marriages broken, people miserable, cheating, women who get beaten up. And I just thought, mm, no. Although he loved the Lord, which was my criteria, loving the Lord, serving the Lord, giver, all those he made the criteria. But the hidden fear was saying, what if he turns out later on in marriage and starts cheating? What are you going to do? All these little phobias. So Satan wanted to make his own lies to appear real in my mind. But I thank God that he persisted and pursued. And when I would ask questions, one day I said, how do you even know that I'm the right woman for you? I thought maybe this will scare him away. Oh, little did I know. He said, you, are you going to heaven? 
I you born again? I said, oh, yes, I am. I said, how do you know? You've never been to heaven before. At that moment, I thought, hmm, wise guy. Then he said, is it faith? I said, hey, I have faith. So he said, hey, faith. I'm so glad I took on that on board. About 29 years later, I'm still very happy. Our love is getting stronger. We're blessed with children and many more. And you people, God has added into our lives. So during this time of coronaphobia, be careful that the enemy is not sowing seeds of fear. What other thing that fear does? Fear can cause you to compromise your values. There are many people now who are going through terrible addictions, who are failing to come out. Because they did not say no, they feared their friends. And when they were asked to try substances that are addictive, they agreed. And some people ended up in, in wrong marriages simply because they wanted to please a man who they could see this is not working, or a woman they could see this is not working. They, say they chose to fear instead of having faith. And also some people have forfeited good jobs because they were scared to go for an interview. They disqualified themselves and say, ah, if I apply, they won't take me. They don't see the reason why they should be taken. And right now, as well as we are in this season, don't be scared and think we are the family that's going to be affected. We are the family that's going to lose loved ones. And even our NHS workers and all frontline workers, when you leave the house going out to this, you are the frontliners of this part of, Satan can start also dropping little seeds of, yeah, you are going to where these people are. What if your protective clothing don't work? What if that happens? You can actually leave home in fear, and that fear can now become the door opener for Satan who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, to come and steal from you. Now, the scriptures tell us that faith is a shield. It shields us against the fiery darts of the enemy because he throws arrows that are hot. It says hot arrows. In book of Ephesians 6, verse 16, it talks about we must put on the whole armor, but, and it says above all, lift up the shield of faith for which you will use to extinguish fiery flames. So to extinguish is to stop, it is completely destroy. It is to put out. So when Satan wants to attack with fears, you raise your faith, your trust in God, trusting in his nature and his character, and extinguish. That means put out all those flames. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So when you start to fear, know the source of that spirit of fear. The spirit of fear will never come from the Lord. Because it's not a, the one that gives fear. And when fear was first introduced, even in the garden of Eden, it was a result of sin. When they did what they should not have been doing, they were disobedient to God. They ate what they were not supposed to eat. When God came now to fellowship with them, they started to say they are hiding because they were afraid. And God told to ask them, who told you? So sometimes fear will separate us from God, our relationship with God, especially if it is a result of sin. But when you see that you have sinned, you've done something wrong, don't run away from God. Don't run away from church. Don't run away from a family or parents. Go to God and confess that sin. When you repent, you will be restored. Because if you allow fear of exposing your sin or your weakness or what you have done wrong, you will now receive a fiery dart of guilt. You will walk in guilt and you will walk in shame. So it's best that you present your fears to the Lord and get rid of them. 1 John 4, 18 says, Perfect love casts out fear. So when you dwell in the perfect love of God, when you know that God loves you so much, He gave His Son for you, you will know even this environment we are in right now, it will not affect you because of his love as a parent. He's going to protect you. He's going to make sure you are safe. Us as parents, we look out for our children. We protect them. We fight for them in many ways because we are their parents. And even in my uh, marriage relationship, because my husband loves me so much, I don't fear him when he's around. I don't have to walk on my tiptoes 
thinking, oh, he's now here. Oh, what is he going to say? Oh, my goodness, the man, he has come. Oh, no, 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 no. When he comes, I'm so happy. I am excited about being with him. He's my best friend. We have great company. There's no fear between us because of love. So when you start to find feelings of fear, perhaps it's a love issue. You need to stop and realize that God loves you and he has a great plan for your life. In the book of Deuteronomy, I'm going to read this one. Chapter 31, verse 6, it says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. It also says in the verse 8, Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. So when the Lord says be strong and courageous, he knows that you could be weak. And when you are weak, you can end up panicking. When he says, do not be afraid again. I am with you. I will never fail you. I will never let you down. This means God knows that at some point you might feel like, Oh, because of all this that is going on, God has left us. Where is God? Why can't he just stop this virus? Why can't he stop all this uh, commotion that is happening in the world? God has abandoned us. He hasn't. He says, I am with you always to the end of the age. So when fear wants to come, that virus of fear wants to come, you must tell with the word of God that the vaccination is that God cares for you. And he has great plans for you. Also in Isaiah 43 verse 1, we are told, Do not be afraid. I have redeemed you. I am your God. And it says, you are mine. So if God says you are mine, even though there is corona or no corona, maybe you are now at home, you were supposed to write your A-levels, or you're supposed to finish off your university, you're supposed to graduate. And now you are discouraged. The Lord says, do not be discouraged. You had planned events like us. We were ready. We were very ready for our annual women's conference. All our ducks were in a row. But we had to postpone. What can happen there? If we are not careful, we can get discouraged and say, we will never have a conference again. Because how will we know that once we have planned, there will not be any other virus? No, that's now the voice of fear speaking. So we stop that voice of fear right in its tracks. And we know that our God is a faithful God. And it's working for our good. And in Mark 11 verse 22, we are told to have faith in God. So faith is having a relationship with God where you trust him fully. You trust him with your fears. You trust him with your concerns. You trust him with your successes. You trust him with everything. And when you have faith in God, you will not be shaken. When things are shaking around you, that's why when the disciples in the boat, when they were waves, they were starting to be afraid. But Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. You of little faith, why were you afraid? So when storms are coming, storms are like a situation that is beyond your control. Something you cannot change, something that is out of your power. When it comes, it's like the boat is rocking. But remember, you have Jesus with you. So because you have Jesus with you, you too will overcome. So I want you to be in the habit of capturing any thought, disarm and disempower any thought that wants to threaten your security, that want to infect you. You are to be immunized by faith. And it's a daily choice. Also, fear can cause diseases. So if you are not careful, your fear can lead to you getting ill. And also many people who have gone through mental challenges, mental illness, some even suicide, it starts with a fear. And that fear leads to hopelessness. And hopelessness can now trigger certain behavioral patterns. Many family dysfunctions have come from fear and then leading to broken homes. There is a lot that fear has caused. Having said that, faith is also caused many victories so the only type of fear which we should entertain 
is the fear of the Lord, which equates to respect for his word, respect for holiness, respect for his principles. Those are the type of fears that we should entertain. Any fear that leaves me feeling bad or sorrowful or discouraged, it's not of God. It's of the enemy who comes to steal, to kill and destroy. So in this season, I want you to identify all your fears. Write them down. Name them one by one. Once you have written them down, find a scripture that counters that particular fear and then you can start extinguishes, extinguishing those fears with the word of God. And as a family, declare the word of the Lord that he will never leave us as a family. He will not forsake us as a family. We are under the shadow of his wings as a family and we overcome. God is going to see us through as a natural family, as a spiritual family, as God's house, or the body of Christ to know that God is at work. We may not understand everything, but we trust him. Therefore, we are going to extinguish any hot flames that Satan may want to bring to us. So we are going to pray. And we are going to go before the Lord and say, Father, I will not have coronaphobia. The virus of fear will not infect me. I am protected. I will use the vaccination of faith. Let's pray. If you have any fear in your heart concerning any area of your life, fear it's like mentally waiting for something bad to happen. It doesn't matter the source. It's all negative and it's not of God. So we are going to pray. Even children... You should not fear. You should not fear the dark. You should not fear others. God is with you. He protects you. He watches over you. Teens, don't fear your friends. You should stand out, not to blend in. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge that you are our God. You are powerful. You are the most high God. And there's nothing which is difficult for you. Lord our God, we come against the spirit of fear in our minds, in our hearts, in our relationships, in our homes, in our families. Lord, fear should not have a hold on us. Therefore, we refuse it in the name of Jesus. Certain, you have no place in our lives. You have no place in our finances, in our health, in any area of our lives. Therefore, we rebuke the spirit of fear and we say, be gone. We are people of faith. Let faith arise and let faith, fear disappear. Let faith arise and let doubt be scattered. Let faith arise and let worry go. Let panic go. Let anxiety go. We are people of faith. And as people of faith, we shall be strong and we will do exploits. As we go into this new month, we go with boldness. We go with courage. We go with strength, knowing that the Lord our God has already gone before us. No weapon formed against us as individuals, as families, and our homes shall prosper. Our city and our nation, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Corona is a weapon. It has been fashioned against us, but it shall not prosper. It too will come to an end. So Father, we glorify you and we thank you for our time together. And we thank you that fear will not be found in our borders, in our homes, in our hearts. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we also want to take time and give an opportunity for people whose faith is weak. If your faith is weak or you don't even have faith or you've been questioning your belief because of all these things, it's our opportunity to open our hearts to Jesus. He says, behold, I knock on your door. The word is God's way of knocking on the door of your heart. So you need to open up your heart and let him in. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today. I acknowledge my fears. I acknowledge my sins. I ask that you wash me and cleanse me. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ, you are Lord. And with my heart, I believe you died for me and you were raised from the dead. And I choose to follow you wholeheartedly. Please enter my heart and I welcome your spirit to lead me and to guide me. I want to follow after you every day. So please help me. Thank you for hearing me as I dedicate and give my life to you today. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we love you. Remember to stay safe, stay at home, and let God continue to do His work. He is working. And I believe when we come out of these homes, we are going to come out stronger, wiser, more determined, and purposeful. So do the necessary and let God do the rest. Here are our few announcements. So on Tuesdays, let's all be online. We will be praying together as a church family. Don't miss out. Wednesday, every home is a life cell. So please give us your feedback of how last Wednesday went. We'll all be meeting again. It's a time to strengthen our faith and strengthen one another and have family fellowship. Thursdays, the worship team is meeting online. Friday, the youths are meeting online. And Sunday, we meet again. And we pray that God will deliver you from every evil work. You are blessed and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So God continue to bless you and your home. And from our home to yours, loads of love, loads of blessing. Bye. Thank you for listening to this message from God's House International Centre, Bristol.
you powerful I'm letting me feel your touch let your glory forward I'm let your kingdom come let your power forward I'm letting me feel your touch 